Hi, Akita. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, Fern. Hey, J Rock. How are you? Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. We got love and hip hop New York in the house tonight. What's up, Fern? Grandma? And <laughs> you and all of them little kids. Hey, Yink Ink. How y'all doing? Yank, you got some questions tonight for our guest? <laughs> Yank, you got your questions ready, girl? Now, <laughs> you gonna see. I have to get off and come back in. <clears throat> oh, where's my guest? What does it, girl? You know, I was trying to play with my light. Hey, Tay. I was trying to play with my light because <laughs> I didn't know if I did a good job. So, thank you. All right, we got a guitar on here. you Kenny <laughs> you so crazy <laughs> hey step listen guys I'm waiting for my guest and my connection will not let me invite her hey sister hey Brett I don't know guys I might have to jump off and get back on because my connection will not let me invite Tara so hopefully she's just gonna send herself an invite Somebody drop her handle down here just to make sure I'm doing the right one. Drop Tara's handle down here for me, guys. Ah! You so crazy. You wrong, Yank. You wrong. <laughs> it won't let me send her the invite. Hey, Renaissance man. Yank, drop her handle down here for me so maybe I could copy paste it in. <laughs> it's saying my connection will not allow me to invite her and she's not popping in where y'all at tell us a story well i want i want this girl from love and hip-hop to tell y'all the story put put her handle in here you sure that's it Yeah, I don't think that's it. Look, look on my flyer. Hey, nephew. My, um, hey, hey, Sarah. It says waiting for you. So go ahead and accept. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> Great, how are you? I'm well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So my service was not letting me add you, but I'm glad you're here looking gorgeous as ever. Look, I was like three minutes 
behind because I was trying to curl this hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, like, you know, like when you're wanding and curling your hair, the time just goes so fast. And I'm like, have I really been doing this for 35 minutes? Yes, I like, was doing that with these lashes. And I was like, look, lash, just survive yes. one here until that's, our chat yes. is over. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 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 I've got to call out to my kids so we can have a moment of peace while we do our thing. Okay, we know you got Yes, I did, Jameson. Please do it. <laughs> there. Done. <laughs> we are mommies on here. We get it. We understand. Because, <laughs> like, if I did not say that, like, every two seconds, somebody's going to be asking me for cereal. Literally, when, <laughs> when I have to go live, I, I'm just like, nothing is off limits. You guys can have everything you want until I'm off. You know, I thought about you with that. I'm like, three boys? Yeah, I overstand. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, I hear the kitchen, like, things are rumbling. It's a rumble. So, so let me catch you up on what we're yeah. doing. And then I'm going to turn it over to you because you are the star. And then you'll tell everybody what you're doing. Okay. So, I come with baggage series. It was just birthed from, I come with all this baggage, right? Right. And it's the signature t-shirt line of my collection. You're going to get your oars. But I come with baggage because, uh, you know what? I, I love to travel. So I, I carry my baggage with me literally and figuratively. Okay. And my baggage includes a whole lot of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Felony conviction, jail time, accused of murder. I could go on and on for days. Kidnapped at gunpoint off my job. I could go on and on and on. Oh, wow. Okay. I feel, I feel like I feel, I'm not even equipped. Like this, My life seems so boring to that one <laughs> phrase. I don't even know if I should be here. This is crazy. No, you <laughs> should be here. Listen, you might not want to get into the part of your baggage, but we've seen some of your baggage. Yes. But we love you. Yes. <laughs> We're going to let you talk about you know, the baggage of entrepreneurship because, and then you can talk about whatever else you want because we welcome yeah. all the baggage. This is a safe space for us to talk. Every week we do this and it's a safe space. We all support each other. We right. got it. We do that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm not going to steal your thunder. So no, give, give, <laughs> give us an intro and then tell us about your baggage. Well, um, everybody knows that my name is Tara Nasha Wallace, Tara Wallace. Um, a lot of you may know me from a show I did called Love and Hip Hop, which um, we never take for granted because I tell people all the time, it will get me into the office. It doesn't get me the job. So I appreciate being able to be walked up, but then I still have to sell myself. So um, from there, you know, I, I use like the most... Um, I guess the most impactful moment uh, that happened with me was getting pregnant with my son, Gunnar. I used that time to write a book, um, an, a self-help book with Allison Alexander um, called The Goddess Potential. And literally from there, I think this is part of what I wanted to talk about, which is the baggage of trying to start your own companies, trying to have the right people around you uh -huh. um, to help you grow, um, not just people who were you know, when the record industry plummeted uh, and then all these people looking for jobs. So they're trying to help and nobody's really understanding who you are. And, and basically you trying to find out who you are in a show that's already titled, already has its hashtags, already has its stigmas. And then you trying to be an individual in that. Yeah. So I think um, that's where I have struggled for many years um, and literally just trying to find my own lane in that, you know, not just what people think I should do or thought I should do, but just like, you know, the things that I wanted, what I wanted to say and, and how I wanted to represent myself. So I think some part of that, I always stay true to that, uh -huh. but it also came with, um, losing business partners, having to push off my idea for another year. Um, and I think, um, one of the main things was like meeting someone that I was able to partner with that we literally sit down with like a spiral notebook and write everything down and okay. like literally taking everything from like baby steps to the actual birth and creation of some of the projects that we've wanted to do. Okay. So I think so that, but what we find is that, you know, when you, when you're, when you're trying to build something, 
Um, I found that there's just a competitive nature between everyone. Mm -hmm. um, although we're kind of in this together and, and where we could help each other blossom in such a beautiful way, we don't. Because I feel like it's that, oh, she must be doing this, which means she's two steps ahead of me. So I don't want to do which, you know, I don't want to help in the way that I should. But if we all supported each other and helped each other, just what um, influencers from reality shows like love and hip hop bring to the table is just astronomical. Like if we knew how powerful we are as a group and how yes. we could help each other develop our businesses and support each other's businesses, um, I, I think that is the one thing that influences bring, which is I not that people weren't doing it before, but influencers uh, that came from shows like love and hip hop are the first ones to step out and say, Hey, I got this cream. You know, hey, I have this hairline. Hey, I have this this very small thing. Like whether it failed or whether it was successful, like we are some of the first ones that just did it without, without any education or any knowledge or any real marketing team other than what we got from being on these shows. And I think that that's so powerful. And that in itself is what we brought to the culture that I that I think is completely overlooked. And now from that confidence and from that courage, like you see major stars doing it mm -hmm. that just were not doing it before. Right. And I said, if we had just supported each other, where would we be as execs and 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 CEOs of our own companies? Yeah, so let me ask you this. Do you find, because I find at this low level that I'm at, I have not been on, I've been on a few TV shows, mm -hmm. but not a reality TV show such as what you've done. Mm -hmm. And I find that I get a lot of love and support, but as soon as a person feels like I may have one grand penny, just one, yeah. more than they have, then it becomes a competition. Yeah, that's exactly how I, what I feel and how I feel. Um, um, and I think that that is where somebody, someone, something has to happen where we come together and say, Hey, it's great what we do on TV and we can, we can bicker, we can fight. But when it comes to all of us, like, because we're already not getting the back like we should from the industry. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is the collective, that is the collective understanding. So and the idea of that is like, okay, you guys are given this platform, now go soar, but go soar without what? A team? Like, right. who can soar without a team? Nobody nobody exists without a team yeah. of great people who bring individual talents to the group. So it's like, there is no soaring. So you keep doing it over and over to, to, to market your business. And, and, and it's, but you're back to your real job is just as quickly as the reruns are over for that show. So I think that something has to happen where we understand that and we support each other in, in a, in a very serious way outside of what we do in front of the camera. Right. And a team is super hard to build because mm -hmm. a lot of times just with any of the projects that I'm doing, whether it's with my plays or, you know, with my books, anything, right. when you're trying to build a team, my t-shirt brand, this, anything, then you find that a lot of times you, you, you end up with some opportunists on your team. And it's really hard to get a solid team. But I think also, like, a lot of that comes from, and I'm a very trustworthy person, unfortunately. Me too. I, I, and that comes from that, the, that we have to stop that. We have to put proper paperwork in place, sit down and speak to your lawyer as you should, and create things that are in place to protect you. Yeah. And if I you agree. guys ride off into the sunset as friends and business partners, that's great. And if you don't, you are still protected. Absolutely. So I think that, you know, um, you know, like, I, you know, it, it's, you, you don't even know it until you're in it and you have to learn, but once yes. you know, then it, it is our responsibility to tell someone that's following us in our shoes. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, it, it's like, so, so to, to help this young woman or help this young man avoid some of the things that we've come with. So I think that, you know, overcoming that baggage, um, in lieu of the theme of the show, it has been trying to find my niche and my own lane mm -hmm. and the frustrations of that and also not giving up you know um where i think i should be not allowing where i think i should be to stop me from being where i need to be i think we all go through that mm -hmm. we all go through that like i was talking to madison today about just about turning 30 we all think we should be at a different place i 
can remember turning 30 and not feeling like I was ahead yes. enough. Or you yes. do that whole comparison thing like, well, damn, when she turned 30, you know, you, you, yes. your mind kind of plays tricks on you. So, yeah, we all, you know, fall down that slippery slope sometimes. Yeah, but you know what? Just as, just as far back as you think you are, something can happen and catapult you so far ahead. Yeah. And I think that that's what people have to... Um, you know, not just put into the universe and manifest, but work towards. And so as long as, you know, I have this thing now, it's like as long as you're living in your purpose and going along and everything that you're doing is a part of your purpose and you can find that this is a stepping stone for the next thing you want to do in some way, then everything will fall in line and you will mm -hmm. never be off course and you will never think that someone, because look, we live in New York and the thing about New York is somebody can do be doing amazing and then next thing you know, you're beyond them. And then next thing you know, there's someone younger coming and they're beyond you. So it, it literally, I mean, just, just life has taught us that. So it's, it's once life has taught you that, and the fact is like there's evidence, there are people, there are conversations that can be had, there's really nothing to fear. We just have to use the truth of what we see. Yeah. You know, to, Everything comes full circle sometimes. I can yeah. remember having a boss before uh, a manager and there was a yeah. supervisor under her mm -hmm. who just I, I just wasn't her type which was fine yeah but the manager used to tell her listen crystal could be your boss one day because that's how this company operates so yeah you know it's just like you're saying somebody in new york i lived in la for a brief time and i saw this happen all yeah. the time but when we talk about manifestation i just want to tell you this one thing so when I was doing my play, I had you down on my list <laughs> like four or yeah. five years ago, right? <laughs> That's so crazy. So, so Where were you? I was looking for you. <laughs> I was looking for you. Listen, it's timing. Timing is everything. And the manifestation has happened. Do you hear what yes. I tell you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes. it was so funny because Madison said that yesterday. And I was like, it's just so crazy how you know, far people think they are from each other, but now we're literally just a DM away from each other. Just a DM away. We're but literally. I, I say this. Yes, yeah, I say this all the time. Like, who I want for my play is, you know, in the middle, just one phone call in the middle. Yeah. So, but now we are here. <laughs> but now we're here. But you know what? what one thing that I, that, I, that, I, that I also have to say in terms of that is, um, um, I know, so we will get into this later, but like just the boss will like literally reach out to people without the middleman and they will respond. When you send people and, and I've done it, I've done it recently. I put like all my fears aside and just start reaching out to people and they responded. I was like, well, now what do I say? <laughs> but no, they responded because of who it was. Because I can tell you right now, if I reach out to those same people, I'm going to see seen and they answer back. You just, you never know. You never know. You know, the I mean, other day, I have done so. But you know, a girl, like, that's not, sometimes that's not true because I, I, sometimes I do, I read through my DMs, you know, and, and a perfect example, this girl was just like, hey, you know, I'll give you $50 to do this. And I'm just like, this cost me nothing. Like, you know, I didn't even speak, I didn't say anything to her. I, I went and I, and this is just who I am in general. I went, I did exactly what she asked me to do. And I never, and all, and then at the end, she was like, thank you. And all I said was, you welcome. Like, I'm like, if that could just make someone's day that simple thing, like, just do it. But that's yeah. how my friends, I'll be like, can you do this or that? And I'll do it. And I'm like, like, you never responded. I'm like, I just did it. I didn't respond, but I did it. Like, instead, <laughs> you know, so, but it, it can, but you have, even if, even if not, you have nothing to lose, even if they don't. All you, yeah. all you have is to gain. It's true. It's true. Oh, trust me, I ain't scared. Like, I, I just yeah. go here and do no, it. No, obviously, I'll honestly, look at I was, scared. And I'll be like, I was scared. I had to put it aside. I was scared. And I, and, and I just put everything aside, and I just asked people. And I'm like, I got to start doing this more. Like, you know, I got to stop being afraid. Oh, so yeah. I think that's, that's baggage that we all carry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes, so you want to talk about these products you have? I do, I do. So, um, uh, so back November, I'm sorry, September 21st, we launched Self Care Sunday brand, which we are so excited about. Self Care Sunday, um, the hero product is a booty scrub. I see. So I need some. 
We also have uh, body milk and we have a specialty candle. So um, why the booty? Um, you know, our question is why not the booty? You know, we're kind of living in a time where girls are doing a lot of work on themselves. Um, you can't get to, to the Medi Spa like you want to. And it's important that we create body, you know, a specialty skincare for the body parts that aren't getting the love that they should get. Uh, one being the booty. Uh, a lot of girls are spending a lot of money on getting their butt done and then putting jerkins on there. So we want to combat that with the things that she needs to to have uh, uh, a very moist, tight, supple, um, stretch mark free. Oh, but, does it help get rid of them? Yes, it does. Yes, oh. it does. So it has uh, about seven or eight essential oils in there. Um, one for tightening, one to target stretch marks. And, um, you know, obviously it's a sugar infused scrub. So it's also to exfoliate. Um, exfoliation is like the bare minimum of, of getting rid of all of the dead skin cells to reveal amazing skin underneath there. So that's, um, that's, uh, that's like our baby that we're so excited about. Um, also in the next two weeks, we will be launching, um, shop ITHFM, which is uh, shop. It's the hair for me. So those are the two products that, you know, we have, I mean, we just started with nothing, a pen and a paper and, um, and now we have, we've launched the company. Well, so I'm we're very excited. A case. <laughs> yes. No, I'm ordering a case. no, I'm no different. When I run out, I'm just like. When I run out, I, I'm like, okay, okay, you know what? I should have put my order in. Because I have this thing that, um, you know, even though it's our company, like every dollar should go in, right? So I, I like to buy the product myself and order it on the website. Because mm -hmm. I see sometimes, I, I worked in the restaurant industry for a long time, and I would see a lot of the owners' families and, and their mother, they would come in and they didn't want a discount. They didn't want anything. They wanted to have dinner and be treated like any other patron that would come into a restaurant. And they wanted to put their money in and to support. So I feel the same. And yeah. I've had this conversation with my business partner. And I'm like, I want to go to the site and order and wait for my order like everyone else. Because I, I just feel like if I don't support my company or we support our companies, why are we asking other people to? You yeah, know? I do the same. I yeah, the so... Same. And I and I think that sets a tone and a trend. I was in I was in Flint one time and I and I watched the owner. He goes to the bar, he orders drinks, he orders food, he gets a tab at the end of the night and he pays his tab. And I think that promotes like if the owner is not getting free drinks, why do we feel like we should get free drinks? Right. So I think right. like that that taught me something. Those two situations taught me something that when my when we launched companies and when we were able to build things that I would I would invest and put things in continuously into my own company yeah well i'm ordering some because yes i see, I see your body yaddy 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 look thank you thank you thank you i need my booty looking like yes that. you do <laughs> listen you're, you're gonna fall in love with it i mean the smell is amazing um it, there's so many like small intricate parts that went into this um for it to be a specialty uh skincare and just um a specialty skincare company and just um um just what we wanted to offer to women um i mean we, you know we 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 buy so much but there's still things that we miss and that we lack and that we need to better and improve and and so there's self care sunday brand okay well, yes. I can't wait to get mine. And, you know, I will be promoting and supporting. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you so much. You should know that. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. We do. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you want to talk about your acting? Um, acting, um, you know, like, I'm not doing anything right now other than what I normally do, which is working on monologues at home, working on my sense memory. My business partner and I, we always make the joke of um, uh, doing the work. So I'm always at home doing the work you know, so that, you know, preparation meets opportunity. And, then, and, right. and, you know, I work, I do openly work with my acting coach um, on my live so that, you know, people see that. And I think that it is important for people to see that, that there's no level of success that you can have where you don't have to still work at something else that you still want. And honestly, it's the thing that still makes me nervous that, that, that I have to boost my confidence. I could do a million things and not even think twice. The moment someone gives me a script, I'm like, oh my God. I got to call, I got to call Marishka. I got to call my acting coach. Like, what are these words? They're words I'm on the page. The what am I doing with this? Yeah. I'm the same. I got my SAG card in 1998. I was 
fearless, okay? I was fearless. But now when people are like, oh, um, so I want you to be in this, so I want you to do this, I'm like, I'm rusty. I haven't done it in a while. Like, where's my co I need a coach. Where's my coach? Yeah. yeah, I feel the same. And I'm like, I got to get out of that. And because I feel, I mean, she just helps me bring it all together. People, people just, if people only knew what acting entails, you know what I'm saying? Like the real thing that it entails and how you have to break things down. And, and I, and, and I really am so into even watching her work with other people, you know, and seeing their breakthroughs and how it motivates me. And I still have my notebook and I'm writing it all down and I'm like, Oh shoot, I forgot about that. I should, why didn't I think about that then? Or like, even yeah. sometimes I'll have a breakthrough when we're alive and I'm like, damn it. How did I forget that? Yeah. Yeah. I used to, Chip Fields, Kim Fields' mom was my acting coach back in the day. And I had to get over feeling embarrassed. Like, um, Cookie, Magic Johnson's wife, was in my class. There was a lot of people in my class. Th that's where the things that I say, like, I had to come back to Baltimore. Uh -huh. And, I, you know, I, I used to have this thing where I was super upset about it. Like, I had a lot of stuff going on in LA but I had to come back here yeah. and where would my life have been had I stayed out there right right but I had to get over that feeling embarrassed at the improvs and all that stuff and I feel like once I finally got you know my feet planted in my whole acting bug mm -hmm. then I came back here and now that people 2021 I've had two opportunities say as soon after COVID I want you to play this role I want you to play this role I'm like yeah I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> because then you realize it's no, it's like, it doesn't matter where you are. You know what I mean? Once you've, once you've built something and made relationships, when they want you, it doesn't matter where you are. They're going to come and get you and they're going to find you. And that's, that's, um, and that also shows, I think, a work ethic, your ability to sustain relationships. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and also like, I, you know, it's that thing, like if you have to move, I, and I also have that. Oh, does that mean that I failed? Yeah. And it, it doesn't mean any of that. That's just what we tell ourselves, right? Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's amazing. That so is how amazing. do you how do you get past that fear? Oh, I don't get past it. I just work right in it. I just <laughs> do it scared. I do I, if I have to do it scared, I'll do it scared. Or I'll, I'll I acknowledge it. I don't ever what I try to do um in in my you know, especially if it's if it's acting, I try to be with the fear acknowledge it at least try to yeah. use it um if it's if it's speaking or if it's something that has to do with being that's come from reality tv then i just acknowledge it like i'm i'm like uh this is i'm nervous and i'm gonna work through this like i just try to i try to not and it's almost like once you acknowledge it it's like okay boom that's out that's out of the way yeah and i think also what helps with fear is preparation mm -hmm. The more you're prepared, it's all there. And if you just let yourself go, then you can live in it. It doesn't mean you don't ever make a mistake or it doesn't mean that things can't go wrong. It just means that once you're prepared, it's all there and nobody can, it's, it's that thing that no one can take. Yeah. You so, know, I allow things to keep me up at night, like the whole live thing. So, you know, I just made a video the other day about me doing plays, right? Yeah. Touring a play. Rehearse, 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 rehearse. Rehearsals are great. You get into the live show, something's yeah. going to happen. Whether it's a doorbell ringing late, the phone rings late, the sound cues are off, something's going to happen. So I have had to grow past that. Yeah, It still keeps me up at night, but it doesn't stop me from saying, okay, I never want to do this again. Well, you know, I think that's that's the difference in, 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 and that's the unique thing that comes with theater is that it's that live moment. And like, and, and at any moment, somebody can do something different. I remember one time I was doing a show and um, this was in Flint. And um, it was like this moment that I had just remembered and it was all coming together. And, and so I was doing like this, this thing, you know, like it was raining, right? And so it wasn't just about me saying that it was raining because I didn't want to get kicked out of the house. It was about me, about me acknowledging the rain and the fact that I was about to use the rain as an excuse. So as I'm like in my moment on stage, I look over and every actor on the side is saying, the rain, the rain, the rain. <laughs> I'm like, these mother freakers. Is it my turn? It, it's not your turn yet. Almost. 
we almost got through. But um, so, but I look over, so everyone thought I forgot my line, but I was in my moment. I'm like, I should take my shoe off and hit somebody in the head. But like, so I'm in my moment, I look over and these people like literally, if anybody could be like kicked, you know, like jolted, you know, cause all I'm seeing is the rain. And I, and then I, and I actually look over and people like the rain, the rain. <laughs> Which is super distracting once they do that. Yes, because like I'm like I'm feeling myself. Like I'm I'm feeling this moment. Like I'm in it, you know, like and I'm like, okay, um next uh it will be the you know, an Emmy, you know, but <laughs> in my head in this moment. So but you know, like but I'm saying that to say like those things can happen, you know, and, and I'm not really when I look back on it, I'm not mad at them. Like they didn't know if they were throwing like, you know, I didn't rehearse every day with them. So they were really just trying to help me out. Trying to be helpful, yeah. Trying to be helpful, not knowing that, you know, you know, this is what I do. And more than likely, even if I mess up, I, I can pick it back up or get it back to where it needs to be. So um, it, it, that was it was that was just an interesting moment. But it could have gone left because I could have been like, what? Like, what are y'all freaking doing? And and then, I, and, you know, we continued on. But and I was like, guys, I didn't forget my lines. I was like, totally just in a moment that I was trying to like, play with on stage and do something different and I look over and it's like six people yelling at me <laughs> but you know but even if you do I had to learn this the hard way of me stressing myself out want to pull every bit of hair out yeah when we mess up on stage we know yeah. but the audience has no clue no clue. they don't know what the lines were they don't know no so, yeah clue. I had to get past that yeah, like me writing lines, and I want people to say those lines because it's like a punchline and all that. And if they miss it, I know that they missed the line, but the audience doesn't know. But it's it because you experience. heard it like every day for thirty days, <laughs> yeah. you know, and they have no clue. Yeah, it's it's so true. But you know, um, you know, it, and and I think that there's so many stories about people saying, talking about whether it's uh, musicianship or acting where things didn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I found interesting was that, um, you know, every time Gregory Porter is in town, we try to go see Gregory Porter. And um, the sound. Can't hear you. Just as we were talking about stuff messing up. Can't hear you. <laughs> oh, she's got to come back in, guys. Give her a second. So, guys, she's going to be able to ask, um, answer questions, but at the end. You guys ask your questions at the end. Hey, Mama Rose. Okay, I'm back. You're back. There you go. Yeah, somebody's called. The school was calling my phone, and, and that always happens. They call to it's seven thirty. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what in the world they're calling to say, but I looked down and it was like the middle school. I'm like, well, where um, are you? Because I know that you're sometimes in down south or something where are you well i'm originally from down south so okay. i um like over the summer i just went home so it was it was uh just like a deja vu moment it had been 20 years since i lived oh. in mississippi and i was just hanging out with my parents i just went and i was like hanging out with my parents on like going to walmart cleaning the house <laughs> driving my mom everywhere she wants to go like i was just chilling at home i saw you over summer and it looked hot it was hot as hell. I like my makeup would be sweating off my face. Like I'm talking about it's it would start separating. It was so hot. Like I'm like, I'm just won't wear any foundation because this is not working out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very hot. So where where were But I'm you? in New York. Okay, live, you're in New yeah, York now. I live in New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm back. All right. So where was, were we when the when the rude school call knocked us off the sound? Where were we? We were um, talking about uh, mistakes on the stage. The I guess the with the audience not knowing, and oh, Gregory Porter. So that's it. 
with that being said, so um, we were asking one of the musicians, how do they, I mean, it, it just, like his transitions like flow so seamlessly. You just think that it's a well rehearsed show. And they're like, no, we have to know 200 songs at all times because we never know where he's gonna go. We oh, never wow. know what song he's gonna sing and we gotta be ready. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I do not compare. <laughs> Like, I just thought that was so interesting, you know, um, um, you know, just, ju I mean, you have no idea what this person is going to, what this person is going to do, but of 200 numbers, you got to be ready. Wow. Wow. So I, I mean, I just thought that was amazing. You know, speaking of on the spot is what I'm saying. It can be done and the audience never knows because as far as I was concerned, I thought this was just a well-rehearsed show and they knew every song and they're like, no. Wow. I was like, dang. Yeah. So what any other these questions in here have, have oh, been I, wearing me out. I told I haven't them, seen I, you know what I haven't seen any questions. I was trying to uh Hey from Trinidad. When you popped off for a second, I said, guys, just hold up. Maybe she can answer some questions later. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like I'm. Re I can answer some. Uh, hey, from Detroit. Oh, I love Detroit. Listen, you know what all the questions are. You ain't you ain't about that kind of baggage tonight. You try and get to where the money reside. Where the money reside. <laughs> where the money reside. <laughs> oh, we going, and that's on Mary had a little lamb. That's on Mary had a little, <laughs> little lamb. <laughs> I'm like, yo, he just came and changed our vocabulary overnight. <laughs> He just came and changed it all up. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, we gonna um, we're gonna hey Brooklyn. Hey, so so it was a couple of people angry that um, <laughs> Yank. What was your question? Hey Chicago, it was a couple of people angry. Uh, what's like, the question? Like, like, answer we don't my like... question. No, How hard I didn't is it see it. I'm trying to answer it. Repeat How hard is it being a mommy and also getting the bag? Oh, it's hard. It's very hard. But I mean, even if I didn't have kids, it would be hard. But now you add kids and it's hard. So it's all hard, right? Um, <laughs> it's just hard. It really is about time management, you know, like figuring out at the top of the day what has what's most important. You know, sometimes like I have to tell my kids like today, I really need I really need something from you guys because I have to get something done. Yeah. Um, 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 like this week I've been writing a speech for something I have to do on Friday. So this whole week I've been like, Hey, I really need something from you guys during these hours. Um, oh my God. Jameson. <laughs> Jameson. What's wrong guys? Huh? Can you guys just let him have what he needs right now? He's going to come with eye rolls. Um, also, um, I think that, um, you know, trying to get them in bed at a decent hour so that I can work or trying to get up in the morning and um, uh, a little bit earlier to try to get things done. So really everything is about time management. So I've been like, I've been reading like three books, but one of them I, I've been doing like audio books for the first time, whatever you call that, like when uh -huh. you just listen to the book, yeah. um, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Uh -huh. So I think that that book is kind of like helping me uh, and reminding me to put prioritize things there are things I need to you pick up that book yeah it's like some things you're gonna have to deal with so you got to stop getting mad about them and 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 the things that you know you have to do that that's gonna make you angry just stop because you got to do it yeah. and then prioritize so the frustration is that i've got to work and do a million things with my kids so automatically that's gonna make me give me anxiety so I just got to stop well, allowing that to give me anxiety. And, and when I'm at the point where I just can't take anymore, then I have to say, okay, everybody has to go to their prospective places or everybody has to go to bed. Or um, I call a friend, you know, um, who's been in the house quarantine. I'm going to need you because I got to go. I just need like an hour or I got to go to work or I mean, I got to go a, for a, a walk. So are I you think, doing that um, virtual school? Yes. Oh, God yes. bless you. Yes. So that's the, at this point in time, that kind of saved me because um, two of them are in school, um, which means that I can make give the little one busy work while I get things done. Okay. Yeah. But I, I always have to keep an ear out because, you know, these kids are interesting. I got to listen out to what they're saying and doing, <laughs> you know, so I, it's like, 
it just it never stops though so i mean it's it's hard but you you have to prioritize it and and there are a lot if you prioritize or dedicate a certain amount of time to things like you'd be amazed at how you can get things done and how quickly but um but if you just if you proceed without a plan that becomes the issue and that's why things can't get done yeah i don't know who that is but someone wants to know if you and mina are good friends I don't know what that means. Are we good friends? Like people see Amina and I together all the time. Oh, Amina. Okay, duh. Yeah. <laughs> people always say, "Well, I mean, um, I mean, Amina and I, we we uh, we have kids that are small that love each other, so you know, we we come together, and that's what it is." And that's great. Yeah. So uh, the questions are coming in. Someone asked about a were you in a movie? I I missed it. I missed what they were asking, but I think, did you do a Diana Ross? Oh, so uh, Tobias from Bibliand had this idea that we should create a scene for Mahogany. Oh. And so we created the, it was up in the air. We didn't know which one we were going to do, but so we ended up doing that last scene. And we just created the steals from that and a, a small video footage in tribute to that. So um, I didn't do that. Uh, I wasn't cast in that film, but we just, we just took it upon ourselves um, and, um, and I follow his lead and I was so happy to be a part of that um, and just created that last scene and stills and, and it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, you looked amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun. I remember that day. I, I, I wouldn't say how long ago we did that, but um, I can't it, we just it was so cool. He's like he's such an artist and um, just being around him and just your ideas and creating what you want to create as an artist, as an actor, just even being in that energy just inspired me, you know? Um, and and um, I was just really extremely happy to do that. Okay, were you in Newark part two? They're asking. I think I was in Newark part one. I think I was in Newark part one. I did, I was supposed to do two. I can't remember what happened, but I was in Newark part one and, um, uh, that was a lot of fun, too, actually. Um, I went to Newark and spent the day filming. Thank you. Thank you. I, so I think I was, a, I was a detective. I, I always get cast as detectives. You know, I want to be like a, you know, a sex symbol or like a, uh, 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 um, you know, somebody with depth, like, you know. Oh, you know, well, we can make that happen. Of angels in America who's got issues and complexities and like, you know, you know, so... But I always, I'm always a damn detective. I want to be like a love interest detective with layers who's not quite right. Maybe on medication, drinks a little bit. <laughs> but then you, you're, if you're being cast as detective, then you are not being typecast from your previous show. Oh no, I'm not. No, you know what? I like that. No, I don't. I don't even mind. I, you know, I don't mind that at all. I was just, I was just indulging in being funny. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I like it. Yeah. So I that was a lot of fun. So, you know what? Like that, you know, that kind of stuff just kind of keeps you going, you know what I mean? Um um and it was so funny cuz when I went to the premiere of that, I, when I I was I had to drive from New York, so I was a, I was running a little late and I literally the theater was packed. And and I, I I don't even know how they got the rights to show the whole thing in this theater and I literally like sat in the middle of these people like the whole thing like I had to come in the middle of the row and sit down and at the end they were like that's you and I was like, <laughs> so that, was a, that was a lot of fun I was like yep but um yeah like that's a, I guess that's a good thing about you know being here is like so many little things are happening that you could be a part of yeah. to, um, to keep well, yourself COVID has kind of slowed us down from yeah. some of the filmings and some of the things that we're trying to do I've been kind of considering doing a um, a virtual show, like, you know, just getting the cast together. And since there'll be a small cast, get everyone COVID tested and okay. film it and then stream it. And then stream it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking about that. Um, but what I want to do first is see what Biden can do in his first 100 days. And I'm hoping he can just, like, shut everything down because I'm ready to get back to work work. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, I, um, I don't know how to how to phrase this because I've been thinking about this, which is, you know, this time like people saying, okay, COVID has slowed us down, and I'm like, 
I don't know if it slowed us down or like, do we really need to start rethinking how we move and how we've known life to be? And what is the next step? Like, I always feel, you know, I, I finished under uh, graduate school in 03 and I'm like, I got to go back to school. I don't even know how to use the new computers. Like, like <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is Google drive? Like sharing these documents, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel so, you know, I'm like, maybe this is our time to really re-educate ourselves. Like, this is not a time for us to slow down, but the same urgency that we went to work in, maybe we should use that same urgency to educate ourselves differently. Well, that's true, Ty, but okay, we had almost a year. I've been educated myself now. I'm ready after one year to get back to business. Let me tell you something. <laughs> All I want to say is my role better be written because you had a year. You done had a year. <laughs> My role better be complete. I got you. Okay. I got you. <laughs> yeah, man, like that, you know, so I, I, I try to look at it like that. And, and, you know, I mean, and think about all the times you're like, I just want to rest. I want to chill. I want to relax. Well, now we got it. Now we realize that's not what we want. I don't hear anybody complaining when they're back up going to work every day. No, I do. I appreciate this time. I appreciate yeah. this time. It's just the creative part that I'm really missing. Like, you know, I had big plans for the show and I just miss it. But yeah, I do no. appreciate this time being being home. But uh, OK, enough. Already. I will say I will say this last night I posted um, and everybody thought I posted it to promote, I think. So, you know, Sex in the City um, little trailer. So I immediately that. when I heard it, right, I'm like, that's New York. Like, oh, my God. Like, I posted it for the sounds of what we know New York to be. The way the subway sounds, the way crossing the bridge sounds, like the when it's busy on a Friday night, what that looks like. And I posted it because I'm like, oh, that's home. Like, that's what we want. I want that. So and everybody's all like, oh, I can't wait for the show. And I'm like, people just miss it all together. But I, it was a self-indulging <laughs> moment. So, <laughs> you know. It, it, you know, it, I, 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 I too miss how my life was or, or, you know, what we know things to be. And, and it goes to show you how, how little we can kind of take for granted, I think. And, yeah. um, and um, I think that we will all be loving it when the world is back to normal. Yeah. 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 I mean, or in the meantime, we have a new normal. So we yeah. figure out new ways to move. So I'm I'm starting to think like, okay, if this does not let up pretty soon, we will take our show on the stage and we will just stream it. Yeah. So we'll yeah. figure things out. Yeah, and you know, if people are home, so if people are gonna be watching. Right. You right. know, because they, they won't be out, you know, they will be home. So that's um that's I mean, that's the great thing about it is that what you what you're planning to do fits with what's happening in the world still. Yep. Yeah, I've done, I did, I did do a show, um, um, was it November I filmed a show that was virtual through Zoom? Oh, really? Yeah, that was okay. uh, a lot of fun. And this was a company I hadn't worked with since my early 20s. And uh, he called me up and it was like, hey, you want to do this? And I was like, yeah. So. Well, how was that? Um, was it weird? Well, um... It wasn't weird, you know, I mean, it, I mean, obviously it was different and it was an adjustment, but it wasn't weird. And I think I connected really well with the other actor. So okay. um, it was good. It was really good. And it, and it told like a bigger story than just that moment. Okay. So that was good. Okay. I got some friends on here. The King Indeed. Um, hey, King Indeed. Uh, <laughs> white boy. That's my neighbor who looks out for me. <laughs> I got some people on here. I see these questions, sir. Oh, what are the questions? Girl, C-O-A-C-O -C -O Love said, how are the kids? They're good. <laughs> <laughs> they are good. Look, I, got, I, got, I, I would turn this camera around, but then you guys will see the white wine that I didn't finish last night. Girl, we all adults here. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing about me, and this is what I don't like to me. I don't care what I'm drinking. I will still go back and drink it. I don't care how long it's been sitting there. Huh? Like if, if it's coffee or wine, like if I didn't finish, I, I'll go and gulp it down. Thank you, Jaya. My makeup person is on here talking about my face is beat. Look, I tried to get right for Tara today. I was, you know, my lashes are on by a thread though. Tara. Look, look you look Somebody beautiful. Somebody 
they want to know if you are dating and if you are dating, how does it feel to date with three kids? Um, I don't like talking about my dating life. You can say none of y'all business. Yeah, I don't really like to, I don't really talk about it at all. I just let people assume whatever they want to assume. But I will say this. Um, I will say that um, uh, dating life and home life, I try to keep extremely separate. I keep uh, like my kids away from dating life because I mean, you know, you may realize you don't like the person and then I don't want them to be, know my kids energy, know my kids. Like I'm really, yeah. really funny about anybody being around my kids or anybody being in my home. So, um, you know, I do the same. <laughs> so I my person same. Tara does not date. Right. Right. <laughs> King and D, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's I right. did the same. Like I, I really didn't get serious until my son was 18. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really, it's really hard because the, the, once you become a mom, you realize like one of your main jobs is to protect your children all the time. And yeah. that just doesn't mean like physically, but just their energy, the people that are around them when you can. And I, I do think that's, you know. That's oh, wait, I lied. I did it one time and I regretted it. But I did it that one time because my son is on here. He picked the guy. He picked the guy. So I was like, oh, okay. He actually picked him. We were in L.A., in an airport mm -hmm. and the guy was you know he's like six foot five with a basketball and they ended up playing and and my son picked him horrible okay. choice horrible choice it lasted <laughs> maybe about four or five years but horrible choice <laughs> that is so funny yeah you know i just um you know i, I i'm really really low-key really really low-key i don't really yeah. talk about that kind of stuff i mean you guys got you guys got so much of a relationship for me you should never want to hear another relationship on my behalf <laughs> yeah you're like listen change the narrative already okay but you know because i just you know people, oh, i just let people you know I, I always get it they're like oh you 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 this you that you you know uh i'm sitting around waiting and i'm like all right <laughs> okay <laughs> you said listen moving on <laughs> yeah but it's you know like i in general believe it or not uh i'm i'm a private person i'm just a private person when it like i always have been despite you know lhh but i i i never really it's not something i i was i would talk about uh, all right people, so let me ask you let me yeah. ask you something in regards to lhh not about the show but advice advice mm -hmm. for me teetering mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. so i told you i've done some shows right mm -hmm. and and listen i've seen trolls on your page before i did just a couple of shows and had mm -hmm. trolls on stuff yeah and first of all you can't win against them because they yeah, got nothing for time you, you cannot I, win you, you can't cannot. win listen I, I went down the slippery slope of kind of arguing with a girl that when i clicked on her profile first of all it was a go find me link that's and crazy. she was living in her car that had gotten broken into, and she was raising money. So she had time. And, look at, and you wanted to, like, send her a cash app. Look at yes, it. It felt I so like, bad. Girl, if you would not have been attacking me, I would yeah. have been taking good care of you. But anyway, so for somebody like myself who is, like, knocking mm -hmm. at the door of a show, mm -hmm. but nervous about it at this yeah. point, what advice would you give me, girl? Because I know it's going to be some baggage. I would just say jump. Go do it. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You know what? You just got to jump and go do it. You know what I mean? That's it. That's all I'm going to say. And and um, you and, and you live with no regrets and you don't look back. I don't think I, you should not be worried about that at all. I like, don't that. don't worry about any trolls. Don't worry about like you should just not you should not worry about that at all. There is nothing you're going to do in life on Instagram that's going to prevent a troll from coming at you. You could well, be the, well, you could be a heavenly saint about. and the halo just appears when you walk in the room and then somebody be like, you know, I don't like it because the last girl had a yellow or halo. That means that she must be kind of sinful because her halo ain't as yellow as the other halo. Like you, there's nothing you can do. No, so, no, no, no. So the trolls are not what make me nervous. I already know the trolls are going to come. They're going to be there. I've experienced them. I think my thing is just watching all these shows, not yours, but um housewives or anything watching yeah. these shows it affects their relationships mm -hmm. i'm married and it yeah. it affects their relationships so i'm like oh child 
Well, I have private advice, but I would I would still say now to just jump and do it. Like 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 just jump and do it. And then how I the second thing I feel I I would tell you privately. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> yeah, because like you know, um, I I just think that you know if if you have opportunities that you want, um, you know, uh, your partner, your husband, uh, j to just jump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great advice. Yeah. I receive it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's how, I mean, that's how, that's how I truly feel. I don't, I don't think anybody should hold back. And I read something, uh, the beginning of last year, which is like being small is not working. That's not what the, that's not, the universe is no longer in that period. So to be small or reserved is not beneficial anymore. Yeah. So it's just not the time for that. So you just got to jump and be big. <laughs> and make it all work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because it can. It can. It can. Yeah. Yep. So listen, we know you have to get to Jameson and the crew. You have any... Um, for two seconds, I forgot Jameson? I was in La La Land. I didn't think I was going to have to leave. Now I... <laughs> what are you saying? You know, you can me on here for as long as you like. Crystal. <laughs> you can stay on here for as long as you like and talk about as much as you like. And um, I'm going to order some of those products for my booty. Oh, I appreciate that. And Thank I'm going to so promote them. And I'm also, you know what else I'm going to do? I am going to order an abundance and I'm going to do a giveaway. Okay. So we'll do a giveaway so that we can okay. introduce more people to your products. Yes, let's talk about that. You know, like I'd love to sit down with you tomorrow and see, you know, um, you know, and we all sit down and figure that out, my business partner and I. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. It was so cool talking to you. I love girl time, by the way. Thank you. I love it, too. And, yeah. you, know, you know, we already vibing and we got this thing going on. So we're going to keep it going on because it's all well, about I'll, the relationship. I'll be, I'll be waiting patiently for my monologue. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. Look, all our right. makeup artist is here. Jaya, our makeup artist for our shows is here. Hey, hey Jaya. Jaya. Look, I'm going to need some help. I don't look. Like you know, I I like, I got it a, together a little bit today, Jay, and I know you could probably fix this. But like tomorrow, I'll do the same thing and be looking crazy online. <laughs> so, Jaya, I definitely need you. That's Jaya J Star. Jaya J Star, get us right. Yeah. Oh, that's do that's so dope. So okay, guys, plug right. your website and your information so that they can go and order their products. Plug yes. it. Plug it. Plug it. And then, guys, you can order your I Come With Baggage because we all come with baggage. There we go. So you guys can please go to uh, selfcaresundaybrand.com. Um, subscribe um, so that you get up-and-coming information. Also, um, please follow us on Instagram. And you know, once the um, Crystal, once the other company launches, I'll send you that to maybe do a story post for me. Okay. Well, since, we can since, hop uh, back we're on. still building that out, yeah. So we um, hop back we'll on. hop back on there, yeah. But yeah. in the meantime, you know, like you, everybody's at home, get your scrub, exfoliate, tighten, start working on those stretch marks because it's annoying for us all. And I, w I was so upset because I didn't think I had any stretch marks, right? I don't have any on my stomach, but I saw one on my thigh. Just one? So I, I, I went right on over to Self Care Sunday brand. I was like, okay, let me get some more milk and let me get some more um, scrub to work on the stretch mark. I think that maybe over the this quarantine, maybe a hip went over there and another hip went over there. Like, so, I, but you saying you only got one because it looked like a tiger scratched on me. No, I, like you tiger. Know, well, a lot of people don't believe this. They don't believe it and people don't listen to me. And I got friends who snap back at me about it, but um, from the moment, this is, okay, listen to me. From the moment you find out you're pregnant, know that you got to be oily every day until the baby is born in like at least three months after. I was like using bio oil from the moment I found out I was pregnant. I was oiled up all the time. Guess what? You 30 years too late for that <laughs> advice for me. <laughs> You 30 years too late, okay? Like you, you, you have to know, like, at that moment, your skin can never be dry. And then you need some shea butter. I don't mean the fancy shea butter. I, I need you to go to the block where they sell the African cloth 
And I usually get that jar with no label of shea butter. It smells like shea butter and you gotta use it. Why nobody tell me this when I was 18? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. But like that, that jar of shea butter is so important. You need that shea butter and you need, and that jar will last you two years. It will last you through two pregnancies. If you go get that big, it, it you know, they just, they just put it in a jar, you know, you know, it's like yellow and, and, and like raw, like that and bio oil and you will never have a stretch mark, but you got to be oiled like all the time. You got to oil yourself. Yeah, yeah, and you you probably have really good genes as well. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else said, "I wish I knew this seventeen years ago." You um, nobody tell me. Look, that. I had three. I had three kids, and I saw one bio oil commercial, and I went and bought that stuff. And at that time, when I went to the drugstore to buy it the first time, nobody even knew what it was or where it was, and I forgot what section it was in, but. I bought the bio oil, then I started um, buying it online, and then they start making a larger one. Um, that and and the raw shea butter, like no fancy. Oh, it, it, it smells like berries. No, you need the where well, you got to take a match and light it a little bit, <laughs> melt it. You know, it's hard. so you don't have to like rub <laughs> so hard. Like between those two, I'm talking about. You have to stay moist. Like underneath your clothes should be a little damp. That's how moist you have to remain, and you will not get stretch marks. Up. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah, well, I told you I've been looking at your body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Look, my body is nowhere near where it, where it needs to be perfect, but I thank you. Um, but I'm telling you, that, that stuff works. Like, that works. And, and I, I won't even go to my other secrets. We'll save that for the next one. Okay. Well, all right. We shall catch up tomorrow. Yes. Yes. And thank you so much for being on here. Um, oh, thank you for having women me. supporting women, and I appreciate yeah. your time. Yes, yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, so and have I'll, a good night. And you too. um, when I come to New York, I'll be seeing you. I will be seeing <laughs> you. Yes, we'll go grab some food. Okay, yes, all right, Chances. okay, bye, y'all. Right, bye, everybody.